Well, good morning. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. And you are on our YouTube channel. And this is where we upload sermons and devotionals. All through the month of December, we are doing a devotional every day from now all the way until Christmas Day, looking at our chrismon tree. Now, I know the word chrismon is a little strange, but it's just a compound word of the words Christ and monogram. These ornaments teach us about Jesus, and they replace some of the familiar uh, ornaments like snowmen, snowflakes, and plastic Santas. Now, this tree teaches us not just about Christmas, not just about that first Christmas, but also about Jesus and explain uh, some of his deity and theology. Today, we are going to look at the symbol of the fleur-de-lis. Now, I'm sure you've seen a fleur-de-lis before. Uh, it's a stylized lily flower. It has French origins, and it's been used for centuries because of its design and symbolism. And whether you've seen it used on a royal coat of arms, or as a religious symbol, or maybe just a simple decoration, the fleur-de-lis has a very long and rich history. Growing up, I used to see it in Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts. And actually, it comes from the very beginning of scouting itself. In one of the very first ever scouting camps, scouts were awarded a fleur-de-lis badge. Lord Baden-Powell, the leader of the camp, claimed that he took inspiration for the use of the fleur-de-lis from the north point on a compass. He said to him it symbolized the scouts and how they were always reliable, and just like a compass, they pointed the way. In Christianity, lilies symbolize purity and chastity, which may be why the Florida Lee historically represents Mary. Uh, coins from the 11th century have noble seals, statues, stained glass windows. They all depict Mary holding this lily flower. And while Mary has the strongest connection with the flower, it's also been used to represent Jesus and the Trinity. Because we have three petals, then there's a clear connection with the three figureheads of God. Alternatively, the petals have also been associated with faith, wisdom, and chivalry. Now, we've already looked at uh, one verse in the Bible about lilies, so I thought we'd look at a different one today. Our verse today is from Hosea 14, verse 5. I will be like the dew to Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall take root like the trees of Lebanon. You know, it was to Israel that this promise was first made, and it was at a time when the nation was rebelling against God. They had wantonly chased after false gods. But the Lord promised to become as refreshing as dew from heaven to them. You know, the dew drenches the land that is dry. It refreshes, it brings life, it brings vitality back, and it descends from the heavens secretly and silently and slowly and unobserved. And yet every single droplet gently softens iron hard soil and it allows the joy of life to pour into withering plants. And the refreshing dew from heaven that is so beautifully promised to revive Israel is equally God's promise to the church today. For we, we have already been showered with every spiritual blessing in Jesus Christ. We were each called and chosen from sin. We were each cleansed and clothed in robes of righteousness, and we were saved and redeemed. We were sanctified and glorified in Christ Jesus our Lord. So often as we trudge through the darkness of this world, we too can become weary and worn but let us never forget that the dew of heaven is God's daily blessing to us, helping us to blossom and to take root. Christmas can wear us out, but don't droop. Instead, feel revived, reinvigorated, rejuvenated, replenished, and refreshed today and forevermore. Merry Christmas.